Conversations, and I think the environment today is, is very wide open and fertile for that. Looking at the Occupy movement, you know, as a wake-up call, uh, you see it everywhere. I have uh, some friends who, are, you know, work with us in the department, and one of them has a brother-in-law who works, you know, graduated high school, went straight to the warehouse, working a forklift, 25 years in, two kids, house payment, you know, the life. And uh, he called up, uh, you know, his brother and, you know, invited his wife over, you know, PhDs, and they're like, hey man, you know, all the guys on the floor were reading this book, Behold a Pale Horse. You know, and it's like, the guys on the floor of the warehouse are, are waking up. It's something that's in the air, something that's in the water, something that's, that's resonating in everybody, I think, right now, to have questions and to connect the dots. You know, I, I hear a lot of people say, oh, well, if we take care of teenage pregnancy, or we take care of this, or if we take care of that, and it's like, okay, good, you're thinking like that, that we gotta fix something to make it work. But I think what, 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 what Chicano Studies offers, you know, in its critical pedagogy, is to connect all of those dots and see how it's all related, how it all feeds upon each other to create this mess that we're all trying to figure out how to chop it apart. So if anything, you know, when you leave here is go back, you know, wherever you're from and, you know, in the hallways where we're at at CSUN, in the streets, in the malls, uh, on your Facebook. I mean, one of my friends, you know, just posted that he was in a bar in Vegas and just started talking about stuff and he ended up with a crowd you know, of gamblers with money and no money and just talking about the issues. You know, it's it's beyond Democrat, Republican, and you know, everybody's seen through that smoke stream. Everybody's seen through the lies. But we don't know where to begin to have these conversations and we need to have the language, the patience, the cariño to engage and 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 draw out what they know and, and, and you know the humility to present what we have you know in a cariñoso way that, that's gonna keep them open and help foster this discussion that we need to connect all these dots. And uh, you know I know Rudy don't like the, the whole forward directions, yes okay let's go right <laughs> but you know I mean it's prophecy right that we're 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 supposed to be experiencing an evolution of consciousness. And I think that's this. This is the very bare basement level of it, where we're having these discussions about things need to get fixed. How? Uh, I, uh, you know, over forty years, I've seen the major always has the the challenge of how to uh, not only recruit, but to retain students. And I always uh, thought that, uh, again, the focus, keeping the focus on your purpose, and knowing what your purpose is, reviewing it, reminding each other, uh, is essential in all of this. To be a critical group, to be watching your department, be watching your faculty, asking questions, participating in the policy making of our department, we started that way, and it should be continued that way. The students that need to be present there, you let them, they're not as present as much as I think they should be, you should be. And uh, this, this department should never tire, and any department should never tire of entertaining the questions you have. 
and the concerns you have will depend on you. It's 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 Mircha that was there before EOP, was there before Chicago studies. And it's been the continuous generations of students that have maintained their department. You are the and uh, just another generation over these 40 years. Thank God, I say, I've been there with Hawaii. And I, I say every year we're blessed that some new students are coming and taking the place of those who have graduated. Activists are still continuing there. And uh, I'm grateful for that, you know. But you gotta go back. In this networking, you know, we've come over here to, to of course meet other people and we've benefited from that last night and watching all of this. I, I think though we strengthen ourselves amongst ourselves just in the group that came as well to communicate and experience these 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 kind of uh, travels, you know, and, that, that we need to do. Uh, I, I know that when we started Puma Pumas in 1967, you know, you know, we were, I can't believe how it didn't occur to us how we could find out more about Cesar Chavez and the farm because you know back then they were so, uh, you know. Uh, you know, portrayed in the media as, as just evil people. And, and some of us still had questions and concerns as to who this organization was. And then we start to think, you know, how, why do we depend on Channel 7 and the LA Times to get our information? Why don't we go, where the hell is Delano? 120 miles to the north. I think we can get up there, don't you think? <laughs> Let's get on the dark car and get up there, man. And speak and meet and uh, eat and Get to know the UFW man. It was that obvious to us. We were so, you know, kind of used to uh, not considering, you know, getting out there and educating ourselves and picking up and going together those trips. And these kind of, uh, you know, experiences strengthen a group of guys. I know we need that cohesion. Uh, all I can tell is, you know, see some match and other matches. I'm sure we need to continue with that. Um, getting back to the discipline in Chicano studies, in our department, um, I love to see the transformation that takes place of, with my students. They'll come into a class and uh, say they're majoring in biology or political science or whatever, but after they take one or two courses in Chicano or Chicano studies, they either switch majors or they double major, or at the very least, they minor in Chicano or Chicano studies. And I really want, and it's just great to see that, you know, they get into our classes and think, ah, we get a hold of them, you know. They'll stay with us at some level, even as a minor. And it's really important to consider this very seriously because it is up to you to keep the discipline alive. And if they're trying to take it away from you in the form of Chicano, Chicano studies or, or ethnic studies, and what they're doing is really threatening your lives and who we are. And so I really want to encourage people uh, to keep on uh, studying in Chicago, Chicano studies. It, it's, I mean, it's something to really be proud of.